So this morning we separated mamas from babies. These are um, the girl kits. <laughs> they are about four and a half weeks old and they were eating almost completely on their own. So time to take them away. And then these are the boy kits. Hi guys, how are you doing? You're so cute. I left two kits with each of the mamas so they can wean a little bit easier. So May has girls, Nightingale has two boys left, and it's just easier for me to know who is who. You are thick, Nightingale. <laughs> so this morning is just a lot of pruning, um, harvesting a couple things. We separated the kits, but it's just getting really warm. So we're not doing much outside, but just kind of catching up on chores today. Seriously, peppers are the way to go here in Florida. This one banana pepper has given us so many peppers and we actually really enjoy this starfish pepper. Um, its taste is kind of citrusy. It's so yummy. It's spicy, but not insane. I only have one cucumber <laughs> that's doing pretty well. The rest of the plant has like little ones on it, but nothing that's gotten very big. son play outside this morning and he came inside and handed me all of our little unripe strawberries so doesn't look like we're gonna get any strawberries off of this plant little friend are you here to eat my aphids you seriously need to look up a rice porridge recipe I showed how to do it in one of my other videos, and I'll link that one below. Um, but rice porridge with an egg on top with a little bit of microgreens is one of the best lunches. It's so good. This one has survived. The chickens have attacked. You got me? My son is, pre my son is pretending to be a cowboy. Um, this one has gotten a little attacked by the chickens. It hasn't gotten snapped, so I'm hopeful that it'll do okay, but we'll just have to keep an eye on it. All right, we've got two more tomato starts. We'll see how these do. So I took a cutting from this plant and this plant, and I'm pretty sure this plant is my climbing triple crop. Um, it would just make sense that that's what this is compared to everything else that I have. And it's doing really, really well and it's got quite a bit of fruit on it. So here's hoping that that does well. This Dr. Witchies looks so, yep, I'm so excited for this. Like even if these are the only two we get off of this, I am so excited that I have a ripening tomato. Another thing I noticed tonight while watering is the okra's coming up. I sewed them pretty heavily because I wanted to make sure I had them coming up. So I'll thin these out once they get a little bit bigger, but baby okra, so tiny, so, so little. This okra is a different variety than this. This is my hill country okra. Um, I can't think of the right variety of this guy, but this one will be a smaller plant than this um, hill country. And these again were the ones that were covered up by all of the squash craziness. Um, this is really the only one that I have going that's decently tall. So I'm hoping that these will still take off. They, they have the potential, we'll see. But the hill country can get pretty tall. The one variety that's planted here is a pretty small variety. My bell peppers are getting pretty big. I'm super excited about them. I've never grown peppers really. So the fact that I've, I'm actually getting fruit from my pepper plants, especially especially my banana pepper, um, we've harvested so many off of it that I'm just really thankful that at least one thing is growing well here. We'll figure it out. Maybe I'll do a much bigger um, pepper patch next year. But these tomatoes looking okay. 
this brandy wine is just fabulous. I just cannot wait for it to start turning because it just said it was a brandy wine it did, um, in this particular um, pack and it did not say if it was like a black brandy wine, a pink brandy wine. So I'm so excited to see what color it turns. These chickens have become the bane of my existence. They keep scratching through the, I feel <laughs> like I know that they want to scratch through the hay or the straw, but uh, they're going to kill everything. Okay. I wanted to talk a little bit about weaning um, kits. So this morning I said that I had separated them from their mom. I start separating around four weeks. They are four and a half weeks now. Um, and by five weeks, I try and have them completely weaned because that's really when they, four weeks is really when they start eating a lot of food um, and stop drinking so much from their mom. So around four weeks, I start weaning them from her. So I'll just kind of take the biggest kits and separate them at least two at a time. I never do individual kits and then slowly take them away from the mom so that way she doesn't go from having all of her kits to no kits and get mastitis. I just find that has worked really well. Um, and I leave the smallest kits with her and let her um, keep nursing them so they can kind of catch up a little bit by just a few days. They, I've never had any issues with weaning at four weeks, for like four to five weeks, um, because I make sure um, that they are eating well before I start doing that. And I have had litters where I waited till six weeks to wean and then some that were seven weeks to wean. It really is dependent on the litter. So, um, but I've found generally for New Zealand's that around four, four and a half weeks is a good time to start weaning them from their mom. And that's also when the mom starts getting kind of annoyed with them. So I have them separated boys and girls right now, just so I can tell who's who. Um, and I still have some kits with my mamas so they can continue to wean over the next couple of days. But that's generally my process. Um, if you have done something different, let me know if it's really worked well for you. But for me, this is what has seemed to work really well. And these boys do not seem to have any trouble eating, as you can tell. They are like super, super into having their own food that they're not sharing with their mom. You're so cute. This is what you would call a roux, a red-eyed white, and it is a showable color for New Zealand's roux. Blues, like this little guy here, this broken black is also show showable color. What is not a showable color are either of these kits right here. Um, that is a steel and that is a broken steel. Um, that's just not a showable New Zealand color for like um, FFA or like a county fair or something like that. Um, you can show reds. Um, which I have a red Harlequin, but that is not a showable color for my females. Let me show you over here. So this is an, another example of a steel, a broken steel. She's so pretty, but she's just not a color that you could show at the fair. But the blues, the blacks, this is a black compared to, you can see how the steel color of this one is kind of like a broken brown color. And then the blacks are just a solid black. So and then this, this one is a red Harlequin, which is not a showable pattern or color. Well, the red's a showable color and the blue's a showable color, but together as a Harlequin, it's not. Hi guys. These are the ones that are staying with their mom. I've left two for each mama. Okay, well that's gonna do it for us today. I hope the New Zealand bunny information was helpful. Um, message me if you have any questions about raising ki um, rabbits. Um, I'm gonna get my little naked cowboy inside to get cleaned up. No, can you say bye friends? Bye friends. Say see you later alligator. See you later alligator. <laughs> bye.